Hey everybody, coming back at you with another video today. Today I'm gonna go through the build and the paint up on Miss Mary Jane Watson here, uh, AKA Kirsten Dunst. She is the part three of my Siren series. You saw the other two uh, with Black Widow and Wanda Maximoff. If you didn't see those, go check those out as soon as you see this video. So in the video today, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna go through some of the actual time processes rather than a bunch of time lapses in building this. I'll just go over everything that I did in the processes of the different parts uh, that I did to complete this project. Enough talk, let's get into it. I have asked for it and I am granting you that request. This is our next Siren series here. This is already in primer, getting ready to start painting it. This is Mary Jane from Mega. Uh, he did the Scarlet Witch and the Black Widow. I'm actually working on, uh, this is a, I mean, there's a couple of different poses that you could do with this, but I'm actually gonna just do the one because the other one's kind of boring if you ask me. But this thing is gonna have three heads, two with uh, Kirsten Dunst and one in a comic style. Uh, but man, they're beautiful. And uh, you guys know what I did with the last two. So I am uh, gonna do this one, and then uh, as a little hint, I'm actually gonna do his Jasmine, Princess Jasmine, uh, probably uh, after I get done with this one and get uh, some stuff printed and a couple other videos out. But we're gonna do Jasmine for probably the next one. Uh, you guys let me know what you guys wanna see as far as in the Siren series or just anything in general. All right, everybody, so I am finishing up the skin tones on Mary Jane. Um, so I mixed up my own little bottle. I always keep like uh, some of this handy. So I usually keep one for female flesh. Then I actually keep a little bit of darker base flesh uh, mixed up in one of these bottles. And uh, I use this for male figures and I use it for a lot of the shading on the females. And then I'll also keep a lot of the pink undertones that I will use for the uh, females and the males. This uh, cuts into some of the areas that uh, helps bring out the uh, base flesh and plus it doesn't look so flat. So right now, um, no, this turned out really, really good on the flesh. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna lower my PSI. I'm gonna do a little bit of freckling um, because I think Mary Jane does have a few freckles and I uh, definitely know Kirsten Dunst does. Um, but if you look right now, like the, the, uh, the head sculpt, the portraits look really, really good for the base, but they're very, very flat. I need to bring out some gradation on them and I need to bring out some, uh, a little bit of depth and stuff into the uh, tones, but you'll see a lot of that come out whenever I apply these other two mixtures over here. Now, how did I get those mixtures? It's just a matter of, I took the basic tones or the basic colors the, that I've made videos about and I just lightened them and darkened them the way I've uh, told you guys to do. And as far as the pink undertones, it's basically just taking um, red, white, and then I use some of the base flesh uh, along with this and I kind of get it to the point to where I, uh, I'm pretty satisfied with it. Now I did, this is a, I'm making this a three head sculpt figure. You can see back there, they're the, the legs right there. But this one, uh, I'm gonna have to redo. This one cracked on me for some reason. I've only had that happen one other time. Whenever I was painting it, it just, I don't know what happened, it cracked. I guess the inside of the resin wasn't cured. So I'm gonna have to uh, toss this one into the trash and uh, start over and reprint a new one. But um, I will show you some pics of the undertones and the base flesh and what I did on them here in just a minute. Okay, everybody, so for the sake of time on the video, um, I went ahead and I shaded, freckled, and uh, did all the stuff to the skin tones. As you can see, if I get a little closer, you can see a lot of the freckles. Now, the way you achieve that is you just turn your PSI on your uh, on your compressor down to almost to where it's just nothing and then just get you a like a white piece of paper and just uh, water down some brown or some tan type paint like water it down severely and just spray it on to the 
to the paper just so you can get your consistent uh, of what you want uh, of to the size of the freckles, the consistency, the darkness or whatever like that. And as you'll see, like here on the face, um, you get some of them on there. Now, if you have uh, too many, uh, then you could take just like just take a little cotton swab and just douse it in some water or some thinner and you can thin those parts off like I'm getting ready to do on here. Um, the next step that I'm going to do is I'm getting ready to paint the bottom legs here, uh, getting ready to start working on the jeans. I'm going to go ahead and do the base coat and then I'm going to kind of walk through uh, step by step the details on here and see what you think. Now I did this uh, torso, I test sealed it. When I say test sealed, I mean I sealed it, but I just wanted to find out if it, how it was gonna look whenever it was sealed. And as normal with this um, clear coat that I got, it actually really made the skin tone pop. You can actually tell the frecklizations. Is that a word? Well, anyway, you can tell the freckles and stuff into the skin tone. Uh, it's not oversaturated at all. Um, I put a little bit of a tanning, a little bit of orange, uh, pinkish tint to it. It really stood out very good uh, in the creases and crevices and the belly button and everything. I'm very happy with it so far. Um, let's just hope the head sculpts turn out the same way. All right, so after the first initial coat and I used a little bit of a lighter blue-gray for the fading effect right here. I'm going to hit it with some dark blue for the shading on the inside seams and stuff. And then I will actually dry brush a little bit of white on there. Um, and the detail, I'll do the stitching. It's kind of like an orange brown. And then I'll actually put the buttons and stuff in. And the fraying will be white. But this thing has a lot of detail in it. Um, as you can see the texture and stuff. So the dry brushing on this is going to be um, really nice, I think, when it's done. Um, so let's get to going. All right, everybody, here is the denim pants that's uh, been totally uh, covered, shaded, uh, highlighted. So now the next step is going into and doing some, uh, usually some white dry brushing. And I'm going to do that in detail with you guys, kind of let you see how to bring out those textures like that. Now, if you want to get uh, this effect in some denim or blue jeans or something of that effect, um, just be prepared to use several different blues. This is all the stuff that I used right here to achieve that look, and I haven't even gotten to the dry brush yet. So it's a matter of just taking and mixing paints and getting the effect that you're looking for, trial and error. Um, that is a big part of it and um, eventually you'll come out in the end but if you want to learn how to do denim just look at your own pants i mean come on i mean obviously that's probably the best model that i could give you if you got a set it a pair of jeans just put them up in your room or something hang them up and just kind of model it after that uh, practice on it all right so first things first what i'm going to do is i'm going to go with some off-white i'm going to use this old brush right here and I'm basically going to get all of the paint off of it to where there's almost virtually nothing left and then I'm just going to kind of give it a test area kind of brush it lightly over and as you can see some of that will come out and you're just going to lightly brush it to where there's almost nothing on, on this brush and you're going to do some accents and highlight some of the areas And of course you have white stitching that's in the denim. So you're gonna kind of bring some of that out. Don't get too crazy with it. But you're gonna want to bring some of that texture out of there. As you can see some of that coming out now. And just remember to keep very little on your brush so you don't have any heavy spots. So here is the legs or the bottom part of the body finish, the blue jeans. 
Um, I did add the um, the orange stitching like in this normally in a it's an orange brown stitching that's normally in jeans. I added that all the way around too. Talk about uh, head rush after trying to concentrate on that. You really can't tell it from the video or the the film, but it's there. Um, I did uh, add the fray to it, painted that a whitish. It's an off-white. Uh, and then I added a little black wash around some of the recesses there to bring out a little contrast and a little bit of dimension so it didn't um, look all flat. But I think that turned out pretty well. Um, one thing I'm doing different on this video is I am going through and explaining to you on the pieces of what I've done to them rather than just doing a lot of time lapse painting and stuff. I think that me explaining what the uh, processes were is probably a little bit better for everyone to understand rather than just watch a, um, a bunch of uh, fast reel, if you will, a bunch of time lapses and stuff. So if you guys like this kind of video, let me know. If you'd rather watch a lot of the paint processes and time lapse, and let me know that as well. Uh, the next thing I'm getting ready to start on is now that I have the skin tones and the shading down on the arms, I'm going to start um, painting some fingernails and doing the details on the hands. All right, so now I have the arms completely done with the nail polish on them. So those are all done. Now it's time to do work on the uh, high heels. The high heels are going to be a red. That's one thing that uh, I felt like that had to be done. I mean, you could change color choices, of course, but I think the one thing in Spider-Man Mary Jane is that the high heels just have to be red. And I think for the high heels, I'm going to go with this red right here. It's a mecha color from Vallejo. It's really, really bright, but I think it's going to be uh, just the color I need. So here are the high heels and they're looking pretty good. I will put some gloss on these and kind of like a patent leather type finish and some gloss on the toenails and add them to the body. All right, everyone. So it is time to work on the head sculpts. I'm going to work on this Kirsten Dunst version here first and then I am going to work on the secondary one here. I still have one that's in the printer right now that cracked on me earlier it should be done here in the next few hours and then uh, by the time I get these two done I will be able to do that other one and we'll have three head sculpts for this uh, for this piece so here is head sculpt number one I have not done the hair yet that's next that is the uh, Kirsten Dunst version it'll look better once I get it sealed and this is the anime comic version not too bad so let's start on the hair so these are the issues that happen sometimes when you paint these models you drop them and you scratch the hell out of them and you have to redo and repair areas it happens but here we go so initially I was going to paint the uh, the base blue with a gold top on it I just don't think that's a good color so I'm actually going to use my uh, oxide black ink that I've used on a few projects in the past and uh, do the gold accents with uh, probably some silver lettering on the front and I think that'll turn out a lot better than that blue so unfortunately guys, I'm not going to be able to finish this head sculpt here. Uh, just got it off the printer and as you can see, I've got a major uh, shift right here it looks like. Uh, it doesn't go all the way around, well yeah it does. And uh, we've still got a little alcohol coming out of it, that's how fresh it's off the printer. So what I'll do is um, I'm actually going to go ahead and print another a little later on and just do an update for you guys uh, there will be a video coming out with a bunch of updates on previous pieces that I've done with new head sculpts uh, probably in a new uh, 
paint uh, schemes and stuff like that, and I'll just include this one on there. So one thing with the torso is I noticed everybody who was doing this model uh, did a white uh, tube top, I guess that's what you call it, on here. And I opted for the black simply because I felt that white just really oversaturated the whole entire figure. And I wanted a little bit of pop into the color and into the uh, piece itself. And I think this is going to turn out really, really good once it's fully assembled. You guys let me know what you think. So it looks like we got all of our pieces here minus the base, which I'm still working on. And I am going to go ahead and put together the figure. And here we go. Again, for this one here, I am going to use my two-part epoxy. I have been using this stuff for a long time. It works really great. And it is a lot better than super glue. So here's what I did with the base. I took and repainted it black and I put a gloss coat on it. And I actually did the lettering on the front and the top in a gold leaf or a gold liquid leaf. Uh, and I didn't have to put a coat, a uh, top coat on it. It shows out really, really nice when a light reflects on it. Pretty happy with it. So now I am ready to put the whole thing together and let's take a look at what it looks like, guys. Everybody, here she is, uh, all complete. Uh, go over some of the things that I did on it. Uh, you heard me through the video of some of the things that I did, but I'll kind of give you a brief synopsis on everything. So um, let's start with the base. So the base, like I said earlier, uh, just use the gold and the black, did a gloss on the base. Everything turned out really, really well on it. I'm pretty satisfied with it. Um, the one thing that I will say is the microphone cord looked a little thick uh, for me and so I used a piece of PLA and uh, worked out pretty nice. I think it's uh, about the right size for a microphone cord. The other one just looked too thick and looked kind of out of, out of proportion. The jeans, um, well, I mean, that was uh, probably the most detailed thing that I did aside from the head sculpts. This was a simple paint job. Um, I did go with the black tube top compared to everybody else using the white. I really like how that turned out. I think she kind of looks kind of like a little bit more of that rock star effect. And that's kind of like what I was looking for. Um, and of course, uh, the head sculpt, this is the animated one or the uh, comic one, whichever you prefer. The, um, the hair, I did a base red like I did on Black Widow and uh, Scarlet Witch and I just highlighted it with a little bit of an orangish blonde uh, highlights. I really like how it turned out as well and um, of course uh, you know the uh, the jeans were just detailed like jeans. I mean uh, I pretty much did it the way that I 
uh, said that I did it in the video. Uh, nothing too fancy about that. The high heels, I went for a lighter bit of a red, kind of more like a patent leather look. Uh, did paint the toenails a little bit of a pink. Most people paint them red, so I didn't do that. Um, and then the skin tones were based off of just a base tone. Um, and then I did, you could see some of the freckling I did to kind of give it more of a natural look, more organic feel. Uh, used the, uh, the tones um, for the shading, a little bit pinker tones, a little bit uh, browner tones for a little bit more of a tanning effect. And then, um, of course, the Spidey logo has to be there. You can see some of the freckling, and it turned out pretty good. Um, and if you were listening earlier, the only way the way that you do that is you turn your PSI way down on your um, compressor to get that effect to where it's basically like barely pushing air and just um, thin your paint down really, really thin to where it's like water and then you just spritz it on there a little bit and you can cotton swab it off over the spots that you don't want on there. All right, let's go to the other head sculpt. So this is the Kirsten Dunst head sculpt. Um, never done her portrait before, so I took a lot of reference material and um, put it all together and I think it turned out really well. Mega did a really great job on the head uh, and well, the, actually the whole sculpt, but he really got the likeness nailed down pretty good for her and uh, was very very happy with it So there you have it guys um, This is Mary Jane and she is looking smoking hot um, Kind of do a little once around with four uh, This model was done by Mega designed by Mega and I will put a description uh, of his page in or a link to his page in the description I can barely talk today for some reason um, but uh, everything turned out really well I'm very very satisfied with it overall uh, let's go see what it looks like with the other two gals the other two redheads in the siren series All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, part three for our Siren series. Don't forget, I will be doing some more of these upcoming in future videos. So if you're not a subscriber now, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button for me. Also, bring that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos, especially part four with what I have coming up. And don't forget, if you really want to support the channel, I do have my own Patreon account. That link is in the bottom of the description as well. So if you have any comments or suggestions, make sure you put them down below. I read every single one of them, and who knows, I might make a video based on your suggestion. And until the next time, on behalf of Miss Kirsten Dunst, AKA Mary Jane Watson, see ya.